Hello and welcome to this week's video and as you can see it is of course a brochure video on the Citroen Saxo. We're going to be going through this today obviously because I own a Citroen Saxo, love the car, it's a fantastic little car. Um, it obviously isn't a car that is really going to be remembered widely and as being some sort of a legend or anything like that. It doesn't have the same sort of uh, legacy as say the Mini, um, but this is, a, this is a fantastic car, it's a proper old school hatchback, um, obviously the likes of the C3 and the C2 and later on the C1 kind of all collectively replaced this car, um, but this is really the last of the proper old school hatchbacks, especially for uh, Citroen, um, so yeah we're going to have a little look through it today and see uh, how well Citroen's marketing team do on uh, the bullshit -o meter um, now on the front here, nice A4 brochure by the way, very simple, it's a Citroen Saxo VTS going very fast, we assume, down the road. Uh, but before we open up we're actually going to turn to the back. Um, and that's simply just to laugh at this slogan, nothing moves you like a Citroen. <laughs> First bit of bullshit there. Um, uh, and also just a little disclaimer that Citroen have wrote on the back to say that the information is correct of... 1st of December 1999. So, of course, as, or if you haven't picked up already, this is a brochure for the facelifted Saxo. So, let's turn and have a look. Now, this probably would have been available, this brochure, from around uh, 2000, early 2000 in Citroen showrooms. Um, and here we have Citroen's sort of testimonial to say that this is uh, a new Saxo, of course it's a facelifted Saxo, but this is something uh, new. In fact, it's something sensational, as we'll start to read. Something sensational has happened to Saxo. There's a head-turning assertive new shape, a wider grille with bigger chevrons, rounded bonnet, chunky wings and powerful headlamps behind smooth glass. Thought all glass was smooth. Strong and better equipped than ever, the new Saxo has moved decisively ahead. Now, before we go any further, what we need to talk about here is the purpose of this. And by the year 2000, we would have been very much familiar with the Citroen Saxo. It had been sold since the year 1996. So this really is um, a bit of a sort of information and sell to people who are either trading up to the facelifted Saxo from a previous Saxo or maybe didn't need a Saxo or consider one or need to have one in their life back in 1996 but circumstances mean that by 2000 they're looking into one and they've obviously ended up in a showroom, picked up this brochure and they need to be sold the Saxo, they need more information on it. One of the funniest points on uh, this page where the bullshit meter really does start to rise is count the revs. For even greater driving enjoyment, all models are fitted with a rev counter. I've just skipped a few pages forward to this double page spread here, simply to make a point about how well I think Citroen done with the facelift of the Saxo. So what we've got here, I think, is an um, exclusive, because I think it's got the exclusive alloys, very rare. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, the Saxo was an old school hatchback. As you can see at the back of the car, it is a very boxy car, slightly, and um, I think it's nice, it's what drew, drew me to the shape. Um, and obviously most of the work was done towards the front of the car, so the bonnet is rounder, the whole front end is a little bit more chiselled. Uh, so the car kind of looks like chalk and cheese really, because it's as you get further back it is more boxy, but at the front it's more curvy and smooth and they've just sort of tartened it up a little bit, haven't they? And, I think as facelifts go, it is good. It's not a failure, um, but it's, can you see where I'm going? I prefer the pre-facelift. We'll skip back then to um, this page here where we've got these very naughties actually faded big fonts. Uh, that does remind me of like a, um, a leaflet for um, a children's play area back Way back, well, I don't know where I'm going with this. Serious fun, whether you're zipping into town or cruising up the motorway, Saxo has the driving dynamics to turn miles into pleasure. Road holding is tenacious, handling is responsive, bullshit, poise and ride and comfort are superb. And they're all underpinned by a feeling of rock solid safety. <laughs> 
uncontrolled sorry and they're all underpinned by a feeling of rock solid safety and control <laughs> If you've never driven a Saxo before, you're in for a pleasant surprise. And if you have, you know just what we're talking about. That's true, to be, to be fair, not about the bloody safety life, but the um, it is a pleasant car to drive, the Saxo, albeit a bit slow, but you've got to take the rough with the smooth, haven't you? It's a small car from a long time ago, and that's what I, that's what I always say to people. Having said that, though, the lightness of the car means that it is nippy, it is responsive, it is... It is good, but um, the uh, bullshit o meter for the Citroen marketing department has just gone off the scale. I almost feel like highlighting that. A feeling of rock-solid safety and control. You could sue them for that. We now move on to the interior bit of the Saxo, and you may be thinking that Citroen are doing themselves no favour by putting this dark shot of the dashboard and making that the most prominent thing about these two pages. But you've got to remember that dashboards were mainly black uh, at this time. And, um, you know, this was standard practice. But as you can see from this shot, we do have the still very interesting layout of the dashboard in the Citroen Saxo, the sort of half moon unit, which just houses everything. And as well up here, which you know, it's grown on me over time, the sort of chiselled out bits where you can tell that this was thought about. It wasn't just a slab of plastic there and this there and that. You know, it is a design. It sounds almost sensual, really. Slip into the Saxo's driving seat and check out the brilliantly designed dashboard. Woohoo. All controls, like the integrated stereo... Hang on. That must be on higher models. All controls like the integrated stereo are positioned right at your fingertips. Driver information is displayed with complete clarity. The rev counter, maintenance indicator, very good feature, and instrument panel dimmer are all there to give you a feeling of confidence and control. It's the perfect driving environment. They've done a close up of this vent here and you might think, well Matty, what the bloody hell is that? But I didn't know until about two years ownership into my Saxo that the triangular vent, if we refer to this here, so this in the middle, it actually adjusts outwards and you can adjust it a degree or two degrees or, you know, to sort of find your ideal temperature. I'm starting to talk like the brochure now, aren't I? Ah, look at that. That could have been taken inside my own car. The lovely velour interior that is the Saxo 1.1 Desire. And Actually, we should mention that because Citroen don't, but obviously models like the Fiorio, the Desire, the West Coast, uh, they weren't about at this time. They were, I think they were probably run out models, really. Um, so obviously my Desire, it has body colour bumpers, sunroof, but doesn't have alloys, whereas the exclusive does. Um, so yeah, my trim level isn't in here, uh, which is why we're not going to refer to it. Uh, so we've got here, for your comfort, Saxo's cabin is spacious, <laughs> light and airy, packed with features you normally associate with larger cars. This is probably half true, to be fair. Um, let's, let's see what they say anyway. It's also whisper quiet, not on the motorway, it's not, with a special acoustically engineered floor plan, I remember this in the adverts, to filter out vibration and road noise. The Saxo interior is a haven of peace and tranquility. Maybe after a few spliffs, but certainly not when you're just meant to be driving. Um, a point about the acoustics in this car, because it was heavily promoted in, in, in the commercials. Um, when I'm running my Saxo at just idle speed, um, and I'm just sat at light, sometimes I am of the impression that the engine is very quiet and smooth, because sometimes you cannot hear it, as in, you know, it might be just because you've got noise and traffic noise around you, but my actual engine I can't hear, and that is that is good. It's certainly not an agricultural engine, it is certainly nice and smooth, um, and that's because I've been using um, Citroen's special service interval indicator to uh, make sure my Saxo is running at its best. Um, some very confusing features in here, which I never knew existed. Uh, so split door bins there, I remember them being on the pre-facelift models, 
My, um, pre my facelift model doesn't have them. Uh, it's promoting the headrests here. You can get them front and back, but only in the back on certain models. But what about this? A map pocket. Uh, now they're mount that's mounted sort of down the side of the uh, dashboard, like the centre console sort of thing. So where the gear stick is, it's on that little sort of wall thing. I've never seen that in a Saxo. Only getting heated door mirrors on exclusive and VTS models. Also, we've got electric windows as standard on all of the models apart from the Saxo first, which was the very basic model. Turning over and once again, we've got uh, promotions for the creature comforts that you get in your Citroen Saxo. This big overhead shot, this time being devoted to the funky seats that you find in the VTR and the VTS. Uh, they're more sort of padded out and more sturdy. Uh, other features that we've got is rear door pockets. Again, I've never seen them on a Saxo, possibly on a pre-facelift or models outside the UK. Don't know, you tell me. Most models got 60-40 folding seats to access the 953 litre boot, I think it is. We may refer to that later. Pop-out windows, yeah, we're back to the 2000s. Pop-out windows available. Tilt and slide sunroof. They also make a point about the controls. So it says about the hazard warning switch and the heated rear window switch, saying they all fall readily to hand. I think, what page are we on? We're, they're running out of ideas at this point. Like, I think they should sort of move on to the engines, perhaps. The more miles you travel in a Saxo, the more you appreciate the thoughtful, practical details. Clever storage bins, well, mine are quite small. Pockets and nets, don't have any. Keep the cabin free from clutter. My cabin's full of shit. Split folding rear seats, standard on most models, adapt to give you even more luggage space. And the ingenious rear head restraint, standard on the exclusive and VTS models, simply retract into the seat for better visibility when they're not in use. I wouldn't call it ingenious, like. Enjoy yourself with confidence. Saxo's superb handling characteristics makes it a very enjoyable car to drive. Very true. They also make it a safer car to drive. Try taking the Saxo through twists, turns, dips and bends of a challenging road and feel the way that it grips to the road. It does grip like, but it's not, it's not amazing. Notice the way the Saxo suspension smooths out the bumps on a rough, pothole-strewn road, or the confident, sure-footed ride you get even on snaking mountain pass, or a snaking mountain pass. Saxo's handling is always firm and positive, and the ride is always controlled and comfortable. There's lively acceleration to get you out of trouble should you need it, and with all-round disc brakes as standard on the VTR and VTS models, and ABS standard on the VTS, Saxo's sparkling performance is always matched by sure, controlled braking. Something I've always said about the Saxo compared to its rivals such as the Corsa and the um, Fiesta is that the ride has always been that little bit more comfortable. It is, it is a nice, comfortable car. All the rest of it, I'm not sure. Here's a reason to buy the new Saxo. These new halogen headlamps are 20% brighter than before. Safe and secure. God, here we go. Care for you and your passengers is always Citroen's first priority, right? I'm taking them to court. So from conception to finished car, safety was built into every stage of Saxo's development. Your new Saxo comes with the most comprehensive package of safety features ever. Apart from a passenger airbag standard like, you know, that's a little bit stingy Citroen. I thought safety was top priority in France. Quality you can trust. That is something I think about when I think about Citroens. Just one look at the Saxo shows you Citroen's total commitment to quality. Now, to be fair, the Saxos that are left, the ones that haven't been crashed, the ones that haven't been scrapped because they were very disposable cars, but the ones left, notice they don't have any rust on. You can see it across every inch of the gleaming bodywork, in the flawless finish of the interior, and in the consistent reliability of every component part. And again, to be compared to the interior, nothing is broken on it. It is also confidently confirmed by Citroen's new extended warranties. Ooh, I wonder if mine's still valid. To protect the good looks of your Saxo for many years to come, as much as 73% of the body is made from highly galvanised steel, 
of which 54% is galvanised on both sides. You also got a 12 year anti-corrosion warranty with this as well and 3 years on your paintwork as well. And again, red Saxos, don't fade, courses, yeah, Fiestas, bloody hell of course they do. This is quite good. Your choice starts with the lively economical 50 HP 1 litre. Wouldn't call it lively. It may be the smallest unit in the range, but with 54 pound foot of torque, wow, and a top speed of 93 miles an hour, you're getting plenty of punchy performance, right? I think we'll leave that there. Next in the range is the responsive 60 horsepower, 1.1, that's the one that's in mine, uh, with good reserves of power. <laughs> Where can I find them? This unit can develop a useful 665, let's not get ahead of ourselves, pound foot of torque, 3800 RPM and a top speed of 101 miles an hour. That's more like it, isn't it? Of course, at the heart of the range, you've got the sparkling 75 horsepower 1.4i. And as we go on, we know that there's the hotter 1.6 VTR and VTS. And right at the bottom, Inheriting all of Citroen's expertise in the field of diesel engineering is the quiet, flexible 58 horsepower 1.5 diesel unit, in case you're absolutely mad. They are economical though. Double page spread there of a lovely Citroen Saxo driving into, well, the drive through on to trim levels then, this is the Citroen Saxo first, the three door, if you can get wheel trims for these then again, you're a lucky man. Uh, so standard features on this include driver's airbag, front seat belt pre-tensioners, um, immobiliser, energy absorber, so it's all basically the, the safety, the, the high level brake light. Uh, front and rear anti-roll bars. So on to the second model in the range, the LX, I remember these. These added power assisted steering, so you couldn't get them on the first models. Uh, painted bumper skirts, but not body coloured bumpers. Painted door handles on the free door only. Uh, child locks warning with warning indicator and bamboo cloth upholstery. Would you look at that? That's lovely. Moving up then to the SX, this adds front fog lamp, sights, slide and tilt. Should be tilt and slide, that Citroen. Tilt and slide glass sunroof. Uh, electric front windows, high frequency, remote control, central locking, so the features really are starting to come in thick and fast here. Uh, split folding rear seats with integrated head restraints. Oh, that's them ingenious headrests for the win there. And Ibis Velour upholstery. That's the same one as mine. So I can now say to people that my car has got Ibis Velour upholstery. I'm going to dine out on that for sure. Finally, top of the range, if you don't include the hot models, we've got the Citroen Saxo exclusive. This adds a passenger airbag. Citroen's a safety high priority there, unless you've got the money for an exclusive. Um, passenger airbag, body coloured painted bumpers, side rubbing strips and door mirror housings, yes. Anti-theft alarm, electronically operated and heated door mirrors. Wow, mine hasn't got that. Stereo radio single CD player. So you get a CD player if you move up to the exclusive with four speakers, 14 inch alloy wheels, which look lovely, but very Halfords. Um, and what else have we got? What does that say? Etna Velour upholstery. That is, well, that almost looks like Alcantara. That's very nice, isn't it? Notice my wheel trims haven't made an appearance um, because they came in late in the range, but I love them. And I really love the Seville wheel trims that you get on the really early models as well. Um, and they're, of course, the alloy wheels that you could have had. Colour-wise, I've only once ever seen a black Citroen Saxo, which was an event for me. I really didn't know that they came in black. Topaz Metallic, aka Piss Yellow. Uh, Bora Bora Green Metallic. Haven't seen that. I've only ever seen the darker one, the Woodland Green. And... Looking to see if there's any prices. Surely there is. There isn't. Where's the prices? Have you ever known a brochure that doesn't show you the prices? Anyway, that's the end of that. Citroen Saxo brochure. Very intriguing. I think Citroen on the bullshit o meter are sort of 50% of the way up, really. I think they done well at promoting this car for what it is. I think they um, had a really, you know, they done everything in the right way. Um, 
just about the safety and things like that, not really sure. I think they were pushing the boat out a little bit with that one. But anyway, a very interesting read, some nice pictures, and overall a very pleasant brochure. And hopefully you now have swatted up even more on the Citroen Saxo, because I know I have. See you next time then for another video, and I think it is going to have to be my new car. So stay tuned. See you next time.